Welcome to Gear Garage. I'm Daniel Stillman and this is Mark Rivers. Today's episode is about uh, learning to read water. We're going to talk about some basics of reading whitewater rapids and um, hopefully this will help you. So we have a couple of terms we talk about a lot. Um, one of them is shooting the V and cutting the C. Mark, you want to talk about shooting the V? I thought you were going to talk about these things that I was going to talk about ways to practice. Okay, I'll talk on. about shooting the V. All right. All right, so v. what is a V? All right, right? Is, it, that downstream tongue. Downstream the tongue, usually a couple of features right. on the side, right? Forcing that water in together. It looks like a V if you got to look at it. Water's moving really fast near the point. And we talk about that hitting that with a nice straight angle, shooting it, pushing into it with your oars and shooting the V, right? Getting some momentum to ready to enter the rapid. There you go. Great. Nice clean water. Nice clean water, right? The green tongue, we call that back east, the nice green tongue. What about cutting the sea? I'll talk about cutting the sea. Go over and talk about okay, cutting the sea. So um, Western rivers have a lot of big bends in them um, where the river actually makes kind of a see a, a um, half circle and the water moving on the outside of that sea or that half circle is really fast isn't it yes it is and on the inside it's a lot slower nice and calm usually it's nice and calm sometimes you want to be out there on the big sea but most of the times you don't want to ride that big half circle mm -hmm. out there in that really fast water mm -hmm. because a lot of times it puts you into a rock wall and um, your speed is so great and momentum is so great, sometimes you can't react and pull away. Yep, that's why you start by cutting the sea. It gives you the option to move outside if you want to or lets you stay in usually the more safe inside of the corner as well. So cutting the sea could be starting on the inside and mm -hmm. staying on the inside or starting on the outside and gaining momentum and pulling back early mm -hmm. when you're in the deeper water and gaining some speed and momentum coming back to the inside, yeah. right? And once you're on the inside, if you need to go back outside again, it's not that hard, is it? Nope, usually physics is helping you out in that direction. Physics is helping you out to get out there, but once you're on the outside, it's really hard to get back on the inside. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have so much speed, so much momentum, it's very difficult sometimes. Yep. Okay, uh, so and let's talk about entering a rapid. When you, before you enter a rapid, you're looking at the current that, that you want to be in entering the rapid. So maybe 20 feet in front of you, mm -hmm. but you're also looking at current maybe 50, 50 feet, feet ahead of you. Feet, you know, farther down, you gotta look into your future. Looking at, yeah, so you wanna scan the entrance current, the middle of the rapid, if there's any maneuvers to make around objects and then looking for your exit point. Yep. It could be um, river left, river right, in the center, depending on where it looks good for your Vs, more Vs maybe, yep. between, some, between some boulders. And so you want to um, scan that as you're entering. Yep. Good, but many people I think when you start to row that you don't really look at the entrance current, do you, so much? You look at maybe the worst feature in the rapid that you want to avoid, but you really yeah. don't look at the current, how you're entering it, where the current is, or how fast you are, your angle, or your momentum. Yep, so you when, want to look where you want to go, not where you don't want to go. And That's maybe important. set your angle early when you mm -hmm. enter that current, look where that current is actually going. Yep. I think with experience, you start noticing little microcurrents sometimes in that current and little features that you might be able to use to either slow down or to um, eddy out if, poss if necessary mm -hmm. um, before you enter that rapid. Yep. Very good. Should we talk about some ways to kind of practice these things for the, the beginner paddlers? Yeah, so how can we practice uh, shooting the V? Well, I think one of the, the first things to really think about too is the fact that whether the water is big water, class five, crazy stuff, or small water, class two, a lot of these same basic features are there, just in smaller size with the smaller rapids. So looking to shoot the V, you don't have to go to a crazy, you know, class four, class five to find a good V. You can find them on your nice class two run near home. Exactly. You know, looking for those little things, not so much focusing on you know, once you've got your skills in the boat and you can maneuver, start paying attention on, you know, the, the class twos. Find the little features, find those Vs, find the little eddies. You know, when you see the C, it may not be necessary to, to cut it on a class two. 
but it's good to practice and to recognize this is where you want to be if this were a bigger river. And it might not be a bend in the whole river, it might just be a turn you make in the rapid, that's yep. the C. Yep. And maybe the rapid has a couple C's to cut, mm -hmm. right? Because it's making a couple different turns. Yep. And you can practice that in low consequential class two rapids and yep. maybe even class three rapids. As you start moving up. As you start moving up and yep. you can do it safely and gain confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, other fun ways I, I find when you can't get on the river, YouTube nowadays, tons of, you know, first person video there. Um, don't necessarily see what they're doing, but look at the water around them and read how they, how you would run the river, um, watching some more skilled, potentially more skilled boaters uh, going down the river. Uh, just getting that first person view, the more you see it, the more it starts to make sense and to click in your head that this is where I want to be, this is what the water's doing. And like anything, you know, learning to read, you know, a language. It just takes practice. The more you can get out and practice, the easier it's going to get, you know, the more the river will start to show you what it, what's going on. So maybe watching a friend of yours run the rapid first and seeing what his angle, momentum, yep. and his, um, his speed yep. looks like during the rapid. And what the boat does to him and at certain points down the rapid when you can tell things or features are occurring, what does it do to his boat? before you have it due to your boat. Great. So, shooting the V, cutting the C. Um, practice, practice, reading practice. the entrance water, looking 50 feet, 20 feet ahead, 50 feet ahead, 100 feet ahead, all good um, ideas for beginning to uh, row white water. Excellent. And we're gonna be getting you some actual on-river footage in the next couple weeks, so we can point out some of these features kind of make some more sense about, you know, what we're talking about here and give you a, you know, an avenue to, to watch and practice from the safety of your couch. Um, anything else you want to add today, Dan? No, just to say this is Gear Garage and please leave uh, any comments and reviews and we appreciate you. Yep, like, smash subscribe, the, smash the, smash like, the button. like button. And subscribe. And, and subscribe. subscribe.